17-14, Cawthon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ultimately, what is being requested is there's around a 12-acre piece of property, and the subject property, the applicant, the owner, would like to rezone about five acres so they can split off two, two and a half acre lots. You have that indicated on the survey within your packet. Ultimately, within your um, particular information that you've received, I, the only updates that I would have is I've had probably two calls um, with concerns about the case. I did try to update the commission because there's also a variance public hearing that has to do with this property but does not have to do with this rezoning request. And so I think distilling out the rezoning type concern, but I think some of the concerns were just the type of housing that was being proposed at the subject property, and I'll let the applicant speak more about those plans. And then um, also just the potential um, impact on property value. I, I still those out. There are other concerns, but I think they're more related to the variance request, which has to do with the potential operation of the home occupation business on the property. Other than that, you see staff's recommendation before you um, did not have concerns with the two, two and a half acre um, lots in the area. We have been in touch with representatives from PCA to make sure they did not have significant concerns for two, two and a half acre lots either. And I'm happy to report to you that our recommendation for the rezoning aspect of this was for approval without any conditions. Commissioners, any questions for staff on this item this evening? Any questions for staff? There being none, anyone here this evening wishing to speak in favor of this request, come forward this time. Does anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Good evening, sir. State your name and your address from public record, please. Good evening, my name is Ben Feldman, Big Creek and Bucket Road. Uh, went to Ms. Carmel and Jason about this, and uh, just to be honest with you, I want to split, uh, split this five, five acres in half. And, uh, I want to make a rental property out of one half of it, and then the other half I'm going to reserve for my kids. Uh, if they want to live on the property one day, uh, that's my intention to do this, because I, I just want to make the highest and best use out of the land, uh, the 12 acres that I have. I've already been told that I have approval to put one dwelling on the property, and uh, I just, you know, I figured while we had all these owners in fire uh, to request for another lot uh, to reserve for my kids. And that's what, I'm, uh, that's what I want to do, and your approval here tonight, I'm sure would appreciate it. Any questions for presenting? Mr. Cotton, which, which, which of the lots, the north or south, are you going to reserve? What's your plan? Uh, I'm going to reserve the north lot for my kids. And when you say rental property, you going to build a stick built house? You talking about mobile home? Mobile home. Okay. That's your question. Do you reside on seven acres yourself? Uh, the back half. Of yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this request, come forward at this time. Good evening, sir. Hey. Jerome Tucker, 5938 Jumping Delaware. I think the request is historically the area that's been built is consistent with what was down there and just as uh, Jason said he had two or three calls I've had four or five calls uh, but I'm a little bit old-fashioned everybody the calls are trying to speculate what's going to happen with the property uh, I told him I had to talk with uh, Mitch about what his, what his plans were for it, and that's just what he just told you and with that, I'm satisfied. I've lived in that area all my life. Uh, and prayerfully urge you to approve the request. We got, uh, I'm just proud to see younger families moving to the Clydeville myself. I live property owner directly adjacent to it. I uh, have no issues with it. And suggest that uh, I recommend men and pray that you request the approval for the rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Tucker, for coming forward. Any, any questions for the Again, thank you very much, sir. Oh. we got time for one more. Any, anyone else here wishing to speak? 
and approve this request come forward this time. <coughs> My name is Mitch Martin. I'm Mitch uh, We live there. The farm we live in, all of them have, uh, we might have all that to be fixed. We've been living on a piece of property. It's not a piece of property all our life. I've lived over me and over by our farm, doing fences for all our growth up my life. And I thought we don't own that farm no more. Uh, Mitch finds people uh, managed to get that piece of property. And uh, he wanted some room over there where he had his place. But our housing board just that uh, from you to do the right. Thank you, all for doing Thank you, sir. Is anyone here this evening wishing to speak against this request at this time? Anyone wishing to speak against this request at this time? Come forward. State your name and your address for the record, sir. Orland Bland, 5721 Jumping Gully Road. I've got something here. Can I hand the commissioner just for a few can. Can I talk while I'm doing this? You can. Okay, my family has owned this property since back in the mid 40s. And uh, of course, it got divided up over a period of time. Part of the, one of the siblings sold his part of the property. <clears throat> because of the life estate on the property, uh, my two sisters and I, we requested a deed restriction on the parcels being sold. And the deed restrictions are no mobile homes. Now, I do, do not have a copy of Mr. Python. This is Mr. Fielding's back here. He just bought the remainder of the property that Mr. Python did not buy. And you see the deed restriction of mobile homes, single or double wide, or manufactured homes. We did this to help keep the property values up, not have them diminished by mobile homes. We wanted site built homes on these properties. Now, I do not have Mr. Kyther's, and I guess it's his responsibility to, to produce that when we're done. Uh, that's the first exhibit. If you look, at the pictures, and I'd like to have these back, by the way, because this is another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> these pictures show this is a wetland right in the middle of this. And as you can see, when we have a lot of rain, this floods. Uh, the building that you see there, I think that's Mr. Cotton's house with the water right up to the edge of it. So, there is a wetland. And it needs to be considered with this. These two lights go pretty deep into this wetland when it's in flood stage. Um, and I also, if I can hand out, just say something. While he's getting that, I know it's in the health department. It's in the approvals so they were okay with the amount of water that's shown here or four or seven tanks working and stuff. Yes. They're larger lots for their students. Okay. The public notification signs went up on Friday about lunchtime. We had a weekend, three business days, two holidays, and one more weekend. So we had about four business days to try to consider our approach on this. So please consider that in, when you look at the number of names that's on these petitions. Uh, and Jason, I just apologize to you. I chewed on you the other day. Uh, I don't apologize for the content. I apologize for the delivery. Yes, I didn't for that. Uh, my interest is fun. And this whole this whole entire property, that's what it's been, as I said, all these years. Um, I'd like to see this land stay in zoning where agriculture is going to be the main thing on it. We are getting rid of our farmland pretty fast in this country. Our population, for the figures, is going to be doubled by 2050. That's only 33 years old. We do not need to get rid of any more farmland. These small parcels will never go back into agriculture production. And boards such as this 
y'all will make a very important decision that will be even more important down the road is how much farmland that we have left in this country to feed the, the growing population and the demand down the road. We have a, a responsibility for clean water. That's the wetland picture there. Anything done on that property needs to have those wetlands in consideration. Those wetlands are not on, only on Mr. Cotton's property. They on Mr. Fielding's. They come on mine. In flood stage, they go over onto PCA's property. So, I would like to see this board. And, and let me say this. I think I'm right about this as far as family members. I think a family member, you can cut out as little as one acre for a family member. Correct me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be two and a half acres for a family member. Uh, and also the family member deal, I don't think a break the conservation agreement, which I understand this property is in a conservation agreement. Uh, so, you know, if that was the case, I don't think any of us would have a problem with that. But we hate to see these parcels of land be divided up. There's some smaller parcels across the road, across the Tupper Road. They've been there for years. They wasn't just recently changed. They've been there for years. This land does not conform with the surrounding land if it's divided up. Uh, and I can't see any way that dividing this up, especially with the type of housing that might be put on it, doing anything that's going to increase the value of surrounding property. property I'm afraid it's going to diminish our property. So I would just ask and I've got a lot more, but I know we've got limited time, so I'm going to <coughs> I would just ask this board to deny this zoning request. Just play one quick question I have for I'll ask the other board members. Is this, uh, <clears throat> the five acres that he currently wants to rezone, is it currently in some type of crop? No, it is not. Okay. I think that's some pine trees on Commissioners, any questions for our presenter? I have a question. Commissioner Ralphie? Um, Mr. Blaine, is your issue with um, the fact that he wants to subdivide it or the fact that he may possibly put a mobile home on it? Mobile home mainly. Subdividing into that big lot. As I said, if his family members, he can he can subdivide it into smaller tracts for family members. And here again, my understanding is it won't break his conservation agreement, which conservation agreement was put in place to help keep farmland as farmland, help with taxes so people afford to keep the farmland and maybe not have to subdivide it and rent mobile homes or houses or whatever. So one other question, and Jason, you may have to help me with this. The way it is currently zoned, a mobile home can go there now, correct? He could have, <clears throat> excuse me, man, you could subdivide into a five acre piece and put one mobile home as a matter of right, right now. Right now. Well, uh, regardless of his conservation agreement. Regardless of the conservation agreement, but the one kind of unknown here mm -hmm. is um, Mr. Bland has indicated that there is a potential deed restriction, almost like a covenant on the property. Right. That we have found to the property on the south. And what we have not found is we haven't found <coughs> it on the current property. And, okay. I mean, just this morning, I've checked twice, and this morning I checked back four deeds all the way back to 2000 and, and did not find it listed. So either it wasn't listed or it just was listed in a deed that was older than, than the year 2000, which is very possible. If that deed restriction is in place, I don't believe they would be allowed to put home there because it would be like a covenant. So it kind of would supersede the county's rules. Okay. But if the county's rules are all that's at play, you can put one home there uh, as a matter of right because of the zone. Okay, that's my question. Thank you. Can I address that, please? Certainly. Those deed restrictions were, of course, as I said, but other people have bought property, and they bought it in good faith that there weren't going to be mobile homes next to them. So keep that in mind, please. I got one question, Mr. Mm -hmm. The subject property discussed tonight, what's the closest single wide or double wide mobile home to this property? Mm. 
I'm not sure if there's any across the road. If, if it is, they would be the closest ones. Other than that, I don't think of any within probably half a mile, something like that. I know there's one further up Jumping Gully at the other end of Mr. Fielding's property, which is about half a mile. Okay. Any questions for the presenter? Mr. Glenn, thank you very much. Uh, it did go a little long, but I will take one more. Somebody wishing to speak against this request, I will take one more. Home board, sir, and please take your name and address for the folk drinker, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Greg Fielding. I live at 5332 Tucker Road, about store 3161. Um, I'm the adjacent property owner. So, if you could, yes, sir, that's the area over there. I have, I have great concerns removing this out of uh, the state agriculture to uh, residential agriculture. With the intention of putting mobile homes there, if you look at the, the picture there, you'll see in relation to where my house is right there. So, I'm here representing me and my wife, trying to protect my property value and my interest. We came home, we came home to Valdosta after 24 years in the military, still with the good faith that you know, we would always live there and die there. And we don't want to see anything uh, negatively impact our property values and anything that, that we're trying to build for, you know, you want to leave your children with something when you leave this good earth. And, you know, to, you know, I appreciate, him, I appreciate Mr. Cochran, you know, saying that he was going to put a, a mobile home in the state of the kind of been up in the air up until today right now. But having a real mobile home, I think you guys know that the condition and state of those doesn't doesn't stay the way that it, you, you would hope it would be. And especially when uh, when you see how close a relationship it is to my house, I'm gonna be looking at it every day. So I, I'd appreciate it if you guys would take that into consideration. And everything that Mr. Blaine came up here and told you is true. Uh, as far as the deed restrictions and such, uh, the wetlands. Is this your deed restriction that he gave us? Is this yours? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And how many acres do you have, sir? Uh, we have a total of a little over 15. Our property surrounds uh, Mr. Coffins. Mr. Mr. Fielding, how do you access your, your home? We have uh, we have our own gate. Okay, so you don't access off of Tucker Road? We do. Okay. We do. Can you show me on this um, picture where you access your home from? Yes, ma'am. If you go to where the pine trees are planted, right, and then you see where they come down the side there towards the, uh, uh, my shop, right, a piece that slight opening right there at the corner, okay, that's where we enter. Okay. And so this road that cuts across Mr. Cochran's property, do you use that road also to access your home? Well, to give you a little bit of history, uh, initially my brother-in-law purchased that property okay. that Mr. Cochran now owns. And he, uh, we had some other property that we were purchased, that we were paying on for once we retired and came back. Uh, so anyway, long story short, somebody made us a, a, a decent offer. We sold that and rolled it into our initial eight acres. Okay. Okay. So, so all together we had about twenty-nine acres total. Um, well, twelve and, and eight. We had twenty initially, and then we purchased the peak in orchard. So, uh, roughly about twenty, look, twenty-seven and a half. So, at some point in time, you used that as an access. You did not. Okay. At, at some point in time, before you took residence. Well, uh, when my brother-in-law owned that side. We, that was the only way in. Okay. Okay. But so you're not dependent on that now? No. no. Okay. No. And I hope I didn't drag that out. No, no. Yeah, the question is, Mr. 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 Fulton, so yes, sir. your brother-in-law sold this property to Mr. Cobb? Yes, sir. When did he sell that property to uh, This past December, 2016. So he would have been the one to put the deed restriction in if there was one? No, sir. 
uh, the deed restriction would have been uh, uh, Mr. Blaine's run. Urban Blaine. Have any idea when that would have been? Uh, way before I ever came to Bible. I'm not sure. Any other questions for the presenter? No, sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And we're going to close the public portion of this case this evening. Have some discussion amongst commissioners up here. Commissioners, we need to discuss anything for the court for a motion on this. Jason said you 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 researched this deed and is hiding from you someplace. Well, I, I went back and we can get to uh, four transactions. The last four transactions, so it's when the property was sold to Mr. Nitch, um, when it was actually transferred from uh, Miss Laura's name to both to his name, and then before that it was sold to a James and Karen Dawkins. Before that it was it was owned by James Urban Bland, and so those transactions get you all the way back to April of 2000. And just looked at those deeds, you know, looking for language that was similar to what you see in Mr. Fielding's deed, and just did not see it. What is there? And what you doing, Mr. Colson? Is that something that so the you, people want to in place? Or? So you did check the from James Irvin Bland out? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jason, yeah. if there was such language, is there a statute of limitations on that, or would a new deed override that? Here's what the to me the there's a there's a general statement that says. This conveyance is made subject to all zoning ordinances, easements, and restrictions of record affecting said bargain premises. So there's like a catch-all qualifier just in case something comes up. That, that language, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, is pretty standard it is. for a uh, warranty deed. But I can't tell you, you know, the one on Mr. Fielding's is, I mean, is super, very, very specific. It's very plain. I was looking for that. I just, I just could not find it. And so, to me, that's where I reach my conclusion of it's either was not put there or it was put there, but it goes back beyond the year 2000, which would take a little more time to dig into. But I looked at literally four deeds today to try to find some clue. The only clue I found was just a qualifier that says there may be a restriction of record that we haven't found yet. Well, it does no good. Well, my only thoughts are if, if there is a deed restriction, it is valid. If these gentlemen are correct in saying that the deed restriction was put on there by Irving Bland and the conveyance out of him doesn't have one, that's pretty good evidence to me there's not one. We could be wrong, but either way, it doesn't really affect our decision because they'd be prohibited whether we decide to approve the ordinance. So. Is anyone going to continue looking for past the uh, For my, I would like to be able to ask staff to look back maybe one or two deeds. The, the key is on that, Mr. Colson knows this, you have to go down to the records room and actually look at the last names search all those last names so it takes a little more time. This morning when I did it, I've done it twice, but this morning when I was like, I've just got to recheck. You know, this is it's an important fact in fact this case. Um, you can do it all digitally using the electronic state license. But to go back further than that, it appears we're going to have to go down and do a hand search of, of last names. And I'd like to try to go back. Now they said that, you know, Mr. Irving's name, I'll, I will try that, but I'm willing to check at least one or two more deeds. I mean, what you're really talking about doing what we're getting into is a title search you know, for a rezoning case, it just happens, you know, it happens to be important. But as of this point, I searched four deeds and I just said, okay, that's okay. So, Brad, if, if there was such language, would it be at some point in time, that will continue, that language will continue? Conceptually, it's according to what the language says. I mean, sorry to you. said the same thing yeah. about there, does, would it continue? Yeah. yeah. Unless other parties agreed to lift the restriction in subsequent day, which could happen. There could be a quick one to lifting the restriction later on. So that's why I'm saying you don't do a time search, like Jason said. It is clear. Okay. Commissioners, any 
Any further discussion on this for we'll ask for a motion? There being none, I will entertain a motion this time. Mr. Chairman, I move we uh, recommend approval of this uh, rezoning request to the County Commission. I have a motion for approval from Commissioner Bolson. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, I will take a second. Second. The second, Commissioner Ball. All in favor of the motion, please say so. Raise your right hand. All against, please say so. Raise your hand. All abstain, please say so. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Carmella is 4 1 1. I apologize. Mr. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for your input on that case. Jason, your final case is 